please, you're going to need to connect with them, encourage them, maybe help spread the news of, of what's happening in Living Hope Church. So there will be, I try to post videos each day to encourage you and kind of sharing some thoughts in my heart to keep you encouraged in this season. Um, we still will have Wednesday night prayer, but it will be different. It will be more of a virtual prayer meeting this Wednesday night in our home. And we'll go on Facebook Live and do, do our prayer meeting that way. And then look to other things. At night, you know, at night we do Bible studies. We do some different things online each, each night. So we're trying to keep you connected and keep you encouraged during the season. As you know, um, because we're not able to meet in public, you could even, right now, we're going to talk about ways that you can give this morning. Giving is a part of worship. Giving is still, even in the midst of a crisis, even in the midst of a time like this, giving, we don't want to stop serving, we don't want to stop giving because that is our supply chain for blessing. You know, I, I, just, I just want you to, before we go to Psalms 91, we're going to take up our offering right now, and there's three ways we can do that. You can give um, through our Living Hope Church Mora app. You can download it on iTunes or Google Play, Living Hope Church Mora app. You can give that way, as well as the messages will be online there. Secondly, you can the easiest way to give, you can text. You can text the name Mora Hope, one word, Mora Hope, M-O-R-A-H-O-P-E, Mora Hope to 77977. You can text Mora Hope to 77977, and then the props, you can be able to, to give your tithe and offering that way. Finally, you can also mail in your tithe and offering to the church during this time. Our address is Living Hope Church, P.O. Box 26, Mora, Minnesota, 55051. That's Living Hope Church, Mora, Minnesota, P.O. Box 26, 55051. So you can, you can either mail it, you can either give through our app, or you can give by text giving. So we really appreciate your offerings and tithes during the season as we still have needs to keep the ministry going on. But I want to encourage you, you know, within this last week, everything's changed. My wife and I were just talking about how this is like the craziest week of our lives. Not only culturally speaking, but family speaking. A lot has happened. And we saw the rage to the stores and to, to the grocery stores. And we saw the people buying huge amounts of toilet paper, which you really don't need. And, but there's all these things happening. There's a lot of chaos, confusion. There's, there's a lot of unknowns at this time. And, and what an opportunity for us to be the church. And how does that apply to giving, simply? I was just thinking about this. There are people out there hoarding or trying to grab hold all these earthly treasures. But when you read in the Sermon on the Mount, in Matthew chapter 5 and 6, Jesus talks about don't store up treasures on earth. But what we should hoard is the treasures in heaven. We should be storing up treasures in heaven. And how do we do that? We do that by giving. We do that by serving and going. We do that by planting seeds, sowing our seed, continuing to give our tithe and our offering. And God says as we do that, we lay up not treasures on earth, but treasures in heaven. And then we go down to Matthew 6 to talk about do not worry for what we're going to eat. Do not worry for what you'll wear. Why? Because when you're laying up treasures in heaven, God releases blessings to us even in the hardest of times. And you can see that throughout Scripture. And then the, the, the hinge pin is to seek ye first the kingdom of God and, and all of his righteousness. And all of these things will be given. What are, the, where, what are the, all these things? It's the stuff listed previously in Matthew 6. The food, the clothing, and shelter, etc. So one of the greatest ways that we could do is keep investing in the kingdom of God. During this time of suffering and famine and trial and hardship, we must keep investing in God's work and God's kingdom. Even Malachi chapter, in Malachi chapter 4 and chapter 3, it says that God will rebuke the devourer. Like when we're tithing on a regular basis and giving, even in times like this, God promises not only will he rebuke the devourer, he will rebuke pestilence. And so just think about that. In this time of pestilence and plague, as we continue to invest in the kingdom of God, God is putting a protection over our finances. God's putting a protection over our resources. And as we lay up not treasures on earth, we don't need to hoard all these things in this time. What we should be hoarding is the treasures in heaven. And how do we do that? We do that by sowing seed. We do that by paying our tithe and giving in this time. And, and your generosity is so good. We Already we've seen people send in 
their offerings and their mail. So thank you so much for being a part of this. So those are the three ways we can give. We have those listed on our church's Facebook page. And, and we just really want you to be a part of this. And plus, you know, we want you protected. We want you blessed in this season. And I would be doing you a disservice if I, if I did not encourage you to give in this season. So we really want to encourage you to take a step of faith. And then if you have excess or have more than enough, the Bible says this is bless those around us. Keep an eye out for your neighbors. Keep an eye out for family and friends in this season that may not be able to get out and, and kind of check on people that you know. And that's one way we can serve God and be the body of Christ in this season. So thank you so much. So Heavenly Father, we thank you for tithes. We thank you for these offerings that we're lifting up to you today. We, we bring them before your throne. And, and God, we say and we declare that even in this time of hardship, we know that you're our provider. And God, we know that as we lay up treasures, not on earth, but in heaven, you promise that as we seek you first, as we give to you first, our first fruits, our first portion, as we continue to give unto you, you will you rebuke the devourer, you will keep keep us away from pestilence and plague, you, you, will, you will pour out blessing on our, on our lives that we have more than enough, we'll have food, we'll have shelter, we'll have clothing from the Father, we just pray right now that you release, as we release our giving, as we release our offerings unto you this morning, we believe and declare you're going to release a fresh blessing back upon us in this season, that you will keep us. Just like you kept Israel safe in, in, the, in, the, in the plagues during the, the Egyptian saga, you're going to keep us safe in this as well as we trust you, as we put you first in all things. That's, that's first with our mind and our thought and our heart, but also with the way that we give and what we use with our finances. God, as we put you first in our lives, you promise that we'll have more than enough and to meet all the needs, even with excess left over to bless others. So Lord, we thank you that we are blessed to be a blessing in this season. And Lord, I thank you for all my family and friends that, that are chiming in this morning. God, I thank you that you're stirring hearts. And, and God, I just pray for a huge hedge of protection around this season as we give everything unto you, God, as we trust it into your hands today. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Thank you so much for your generosity and giving. Again, Living Hope Church Bora app, you can text to give or mail it in, and, and you can you can look um, a scroll up to see how you could do that. So thank you so much this morning. If you got your Bibles, let's jump right into the Word of God. I got a great message for you this morning. I am um, just as I've been praying for this time. I really believe the Lord has created me for such a time as this. If there's ever a time in my life and season in ministry, I've actually told my wife, I've been revitalized since this crisis has started. I've been just so revived, renewed, and encouraged. I believe that in this time, I'm made for such a time as this. I'm not a big time planner. If you were to ask me, Pastor Steve, what's your five year, 10 year, 20 year plan? I look at people weird because I don't have a five, 10 or 20 year plan. God has not wired me that way. Where God has wired me is in the moment, in the flow, in the spontaneity of the leading of the Holy Spirit. It's pretty hard for me to have a five year plan when God may want to do something different. But this crisis, if you've got a 5, 10, 20 year plan, you, don't, you can't even rely on that plan anymore because now God has given us a new grid where we must, where we must be, where we must be connected to him in a way that we've never been connected before, connected to his word, connected to his voice, connected to his presence. And, and then even though there is social distancing, we still must be connected to the body of Christ and each other in this season through text messaging, through phone calls. There's ways that we can encourage one another in this season. And this is, the season, this is the season not to shrink back, but to move forward and take more ground. Even though we're limited in what we can do, there is still an opportunity for us to reach more souls in this season. So I'm really energized. I am fired up to bring you the word of the Lord this morning. I hope you're excited too because we're going to do a three-part a three part series in Psalms 91. Today we're going to talk about grabbing hold of God's presence. Let's turn to Psalms 91 this morning. I'm just, we're going to spend our time in the first two verses of Psalms 91. I believe as we read Psalms 91, it's really broken down into three parts. Today we're going to talk about the first part, grabbing hold of God's presence. In the middle of Psalms 91, it's grab, we're going to learn next week, we're going to talk about our victory. Why? Because when we grab hold of God's protection, we have true victory. And then the third message in this series is grabbing hold of God's promises. That once we truly grab hold of God's promises, when we truly grab hold of what this psalm really represents, then we see the benefits of what God will do for us in this season. 
Today we're going to talk about grabbing hold of God's presence. Psalms 91 verse 1 says this, Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, that's a declaration, I will say to the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. We're going to unpack these two verses. In these two verses, it gives us what we need to do to grab hold of the presence of God this morning. I have also a really powerful revelation I want to share with you that's been burning on my heart, and God revealed it to me last night, and I am so excited to close my message with it because I'm surprised that no one has shared this yet as I've been watching all the feeds and listening to a lot of podcasts. What God had given me last night gives me great hope in this season, and I am shocked that no one has brought this to our attention yet, but I believe and declare that I'm going to bring something to your attention that you can share with your friends and your family this season to bring hope and to bring encouragement during this time. As we just read Psalms 91 verses 1 and 2, a couple thoughts about this psalm. This is a battle cry. As we've been, as you know, if you're on Facebook, social media, or even talking amongst friends, Psalms 91 has become the battle cry ever since this virus started. A lot of pastors are preaching on Psalms 91. A lot of you are making posts on Psalms 91. A lot of you are reading Psalms 91. I believe America is in Psalms 91. So this is the battle cry passage of the season. And also, Psalms 91 is also as a, as known as a warrior psalm. You know, a lot of times, as you read Psalm 91, it's really good for those that are in battle, those that are warriors, those that are in our armed services. Psalms 91 is a very popular song regarding battle and being a warrior. But did you also realize this? Some commentators and theologians state that Psalms 90, the Psalms 100, was written by other than Moses. That Moses, the Psalms 90 to Psalms 100, is, is reflections that Moses had on his spiritual journey. And when we see Psalms 90, and, and Psalms 90 is really a psalm about personal difficulties. Psalms 91 is more of trials and tribulations, more on a, on a larger scale. So, the, so Psalms 90 and Psalms 91, they go hand in hand. And then Psalms 92 is a response of Psalms 90 and Psalms 91. So I want to encourage you in this season, don't just read Psalms 91. Spend some time in Psalms 90 to Psalms 100, and you're going to get even get a bigger picture of what God is trying to do. What a beautiful thing. I want to encourage you about that. This psalm is, is trying to help us through the difficulties of life. I, like I said before, this psalm is broken down in three parts, God's presence, God's protection, God's promises. And as we're going through this trial, remember this. You know, as things have been shut down, you know, at the start of the week, it, last weekend was more about social distancing, and by the middle of this week, things got shut down, we got more restricted. And I, I think the Lord is doing something. Think about this. I just want to share about the culture just for a second. God is closing things. You know, I, I praise God that the bars are closed, that the casinos are closed, because here's the point. The point is this. When we're in a time of crisis or trouble, we tend to grab a hold of our true God. Let me explain that. When you're going through a hardship, this what? The, if someone is, is struggling right now, they can't grab hold of the, the, the God of alcohol. They can't grab hold of the God of gambling right now. See, here's a test for you. When you're in a trial or a trouble, what are you grabbing hold of first? That reveals your true God. You may say, I love Jesus. You may say, I love God. But let me show you. What are you grabbing hold of in the trial? What do you grab hold of in the storm? This week, my father passed away. That's a storm. That's a trial in this storm. But my first response is grabbing hold of the Word of God, grabbing hold of God's presence, grabbing hold of who God is. Why? Because that's what I've grabbed hold of my whole life, serving Jesus. There was a time in my life when I grabbed hold of alcohol. There was a time in my life when I grabbed, grabbed hold of these other false gods. But when I came into a counter of the one true God, He set me free. Alcohol won't set you free. Gambling won't set you free. And could it be that God is doing a favor by shutting these these things down because God knew that in this trial people would gravitate to those places. 
So God is actually doing a favor for us by removing the comforts that we tend to look to or escape to in time of a trial. Praise be to God that in this season, God is shutting the door to some of those things. But when God, but when God's shutting the door to those things, especially those that are believers, it creates a big problem. Because now, those that are struggling, those that are depressed, those that are broken and hurting, now, they're going to try to gravitate in a different way. So there's a lot of broken, hurting, scared people out in our community right now. And because we may not be able to see them because of social distancing, that even makes it more scary. I'm even praying right now that, that the rise of suicide would be decreased because this is a time and season when, when people that don't know Jesus are, they don't know all their gods have fallen away. What are these people trying to grab onto? And, and the Bible says the wages of sin is death. That's the end game for sin. Sin leads you to death. It does not lead you to life. And, and when all these gods are falling off of people and people don't know what to grab hold of in this season, all we have is death. Our job in this season is to help people find life, to help people choose life, to be, to be truer guides, to point people into the right direction because Jesus has his arms open wide right now in this season. So I wanted to share this to go to Psalms 91 is because what you trust in in times of trouble reveals your true God. Maybe some of you haven't been trusting in God. Maybe some of you haven't put in good God, putting God first, but this trial, this COVID virus, God is using this virus to, to bring some healing to your life, to expose some things in your life that you might need to repent of, that you might need to bring before the Lord today. So I encourage you in this season, lean into all that God is doing. And, and if you were one that would grab hold of things when you're going through pain, trial, and suffering, and now you can't escape, you know, men especially can no longer escape to their caves because God is shutting the door to those caves. But we must grab hold of men women, teenagers, and children in this season. And, and I believe we are the light that's supposed to shine on the hill. We are called to go after those that are lost and broken. And just wanted to share that with you today in Psalms 91. Your God is what we choose to grab hold of in trouble. But as we read Psalms 91, 1 and 2, I just got three simple points today, church. The first point is Psalms 91, verse 1, talks about we grab hold of a deep we must grab hold of a deeper understanding of who God is. I want you to under, I want you to circle some things in your Bible this morning. Circle the word most high. Circle the word almighty. Circle the word Lord and circle the word God. In Psalms 91 verses 1 and 2, we see four of the most powerful names of God. Now, there are more than 365 names of God described in Scripture, but in Psalms 91, verse 1 and 2, we see the big four, the foundational four, I like to call them. The first one, Most High. You ever dwells in the shelter of the Most High. The Most High is El Yon. El Yon is the supreme ruler I got good news for you this morning. When you have an understanding that God is our supreme ruler, that he is the one God above all gods, he's, he sits high on the throne. Every other God is beneath him. We serve El Yom, the most high God. Guess what? Our God is over COVID virus. Our God is over sickness. Our God is over disease. When we approach our supreme ruler, when we, we pray to our supreme ruler, we make intercession before our supreme ruler. When you come into God's presence and when you grab hold of God, you are consulting the supreme ruler, the most high God, the God above all gods. That's who we pray to. That's who you're petitioning in this battle. That's what who you're petitioning to in this storm. We come before the Most High. We come before El Yon. Then we see we'll rest in the shadow of the Almighty. Almighty is El Shaddai, the most powerful, all sufficient providing God. We don't serve El Chipo, we serve El Shaddai. We serve the God El Shaddai. He is our almighty God. So when we come before the supreme ruler, we're also 
cometh before shelter. We're sheltered at El Shaddai, meaning all, all that we need for this season is through El Shaddai. He will provide for you in this season. As you, as you do our part, as I do my part, God does his part. He is El Shaddai. He is the almighty, all-sufficient, providing God for our needs. I believe right now El Shaddai is providing a need for this virus. El Shaddai is going to provide healing for you. El Shaddai will provide protection for you. El Shaddai will provide everything you need. As you go to him, he is your all-sufficient, almighty, powerful, providing God. Then we go to the Lord. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. This word Lord is known as Yahweh. Yahweh, the priests of the day would not even call him Yahweh. They call him the name because this is the most holy name of God. Yahweh is God's most holy, most majestic name. It's I am. The New Testament is I am. And we know as we see Jesus, he fulfilled I am. He is our Yahweh because he says, I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am. I am. It was I am that called Moses to the burning bush. Yahweh. He's a personal God. He's a promise-keeping God. He's a covenant-keeping God this morning. He is the most holy God. That is who we fall down to in worship. We don't approach him. We approach him with reverence because he is the most holy holy God, but yet he is a personal God, and he is a promise-keeping, covenantal God. Then we see, finally, in Psalms 91, verse 2, my God in whom I trust. Who do I trust? I trust God. Who is it? It's not some distant God. It's a personal God, but this name for God in the Hebrew is Elohim. He is the creator God. He is the power of God. He is the glory of God that we trusted. We trusted a God of power. We trusted a God of glory. But we trust in a creator. That God, Elohim, is what spoke the word and the, and the world was created at his voice. Elohim is the speaking God. He speaks to us. He releases dreams and visions. and He speaks to us. And he creates for us. God is creating an opportunity right now. God is creating something in this season. He's creating an antidote. He is Elohim. He, he, this is not catching him by surprise. And then let's, let's put it all together where Proverbs 18 says, 18.10 says, The name of the Lord is our strong tower. The righteous run into it, and they are saved. Guess what? The name, the name of the Lord, El Yom, El Shaddai, Yahweh and Elohim. We name of the Lord. He is what? He is a strong tower. And in this battle and in this storm, we run into it. The righteous run into that name. And we are saved. We are delivered. We are protected. We are transformed. We are renewed. We are made new with that name. Come on, let's give the Lord praise. Come on, someone, put some, put some praise hands up on the comment line. Put some prayer hands up. Put some fire on that. Because God is good today. We must grab hold of this. We must grab hold of this understanding that we serve the Most High God. We serve the Almighty God. We serve the Lord God. And we serve the God who creates and speaks to us. The second point I want you to realize in Psalms 91, 1 and 2 is that we must grab hold of what God does. Not only we must come into a deeper understanding of who God is, we must come into an understanding of what God does. This passage of scripture shows us a few things. Number one, he shows us that he is a shelter, that he is a shadow, that he is a fortress, and that he is a refuge. What are you talking about, Pastor Steve? What do those four things mean? Let me tell you what. When we know what God does, he is a shelter. What does it mean to be a shelter? He is your shelter in a storm. Where do we go to? We go to shelters when, when there's a storm coming. God does. He creates a shelter for you. His presence is a shelter in this storm right now. He is a shelter in your trial. He is a shelter in your suffering. You must grab hold of this today, church. You must grab hold of not who he is, but what he does. He has a shelter for you in this storm. He has a shelter for us. God is also a shadow. What does that mean, Pastor 
Steve. What does that mean that God is a shadow? Well, that's a picture of times of transition. That means God's a guide. He's a shadow. What was he? He was the cloud by day. He was the fire by night. In times of transition, in seasons of transition, God is our shadow. Some of you may be facing a transition right now. Some of you don't know what your next step is. This season, God is your shadow. He is your cloud by day. He is your fire by night. He is your guide. He is your helper. He is your comforter. He is your leader and your teacher in this season. He is the shadow. And that shadow will overshadow you, and he will guide you and lead you into your next season. God does that for us. God is also a fortress. How is he a fortress? Fortress is a military term. And it's, it's strategy. That when a fortress or fortresses were built on tall mountains and high rocks, meaning that the higher you are, the harder it is for the enemy to get you. God is our fortress. In times of battle, you must grab hold of God as a fortress. He is your strong tower. He is your high place. When we climb up higher in God, He is your fortress, which gives you a strategic position over your enemies. You're able on a higher position. You're able to look down on your enemies. You're able to see where they're coming from, where they're assembling, what they are making, and what they are creating. When you're in a high place, you know where to launch your prayers. You know where to launch your declarations. You know where to launch the Word of God. You know where to avoid and you know where to go. In this season, you must trust God as your fortress. You must go up to that high place and you must get a better vantage point in your situation. You don't defeat the enemy on the ground. You defeat him on the top. And we must go higher in this season. We must go deeper in this season. We must learn to look at God as our refuge. Not the bars. Not the restaurants. Not these earthly structures. No, God is our fortress. And in times of battle, we get higher, not lower. We must get a, a strategic vantage point on our situation. We must grab hold of what God does. He says he's a refuge. Well, you know what? Some of you need a place of healing. Some of you need a place of restoration. And when you're going through a battle, you're going to get hurt. You're going to get wounded. And some of you, you may be in that place right now. And, and maybe this self-quarantine is a gift. You, you know what? I believe self-quarantine is a gift to the church, a gift to the busy American. We are so busy. When I mean, before this COVID virus started, how many of you thought about God during your day? How many of you thought about serving God? How many of you thought about praising God? Guess what? This COVID virus, this whole self-quarantine thing is causing us to refuge. God is saying, look, the nation is sick. You must take refuge in the nation is sick, and there is a virus, and the physical manifestation of the virus is COVID, but we know that the root of the problem is sin. America has a sin problem, and there's a plague of sin upon our land, and, and God is saying, I want you to refuge in me. I want you to quarantine in me, just like God quarantined Israel in the time of the Exodus, when the plagues were being strung out on Egypt, God had his people in their homes, self-quarantining, refugeeing, meditating, being together as a family. So there's not a bad thing in this season. I think, I think God's preparing the church of Jesus Christ for revival, awakening everyone. Because once this COVID virus stops, look at the preparation that God's doing for the church. God says, you know what? If my church won't seek my face on their own, I will, I will do something that causes them to seek my face. God is looking down at our nation and saying, look, I've given you opportunities to serve me, to give to me, to honor me. But if you're not going to do it, I'll create something so that I'll force you to do it. We should not have to be forced to serve the Lord. But sometimes God says enough is enough. I'm stepping into the story. I'm stepping into history. I'm going to put my name on this thing. And God does that in history. When God wants to do something great, and when his people mess it up, God steps in with unconditional love and says, look, I love you. You have mercy, but step aside. I'm going to do some things. I'm going to quarantine you. I'm going to refuge you. I'm going to distance you for a season so I can work on your heart, work on your life, work on your marriage, work on your parenting skills, work on your family skills, work on your relationship skills with me. If you're not going to take time for me, I will make time for you says the Lord. And I don't know where that came from. I believe that's prophetic. That's just coming fresh from the throne today. 
That's not a rebuke. That's not a discouragement. That is the word of the Lord. That's, per that's perspective in this season. So when we know who God, what God does, finally, it says in verse 9, if you say the Lord is my refuge and you make the Most High your dwelling. See, we want to grab hold of the deeper understanding of who God is. We want to grab hold of what God does. Finally, we want to grab hold, grabbing hold of God is a choice you make. You know, it's not a guarantee. It's, it, 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 grabbing hold of God is conditional. It's conditioned on your choice to, to make. It says here, if you say the Lord is my refuge and you make the most high your dwelling. We must grab hold of God, but it's a choice that you and I have to make. God can be doing things in our nation right now to create it or make things easier for us, but ultimately, you have a choice. You have a choice to binge on Netflix during this quarantine, or you have a choice to pick up the Word of God. See, I believe that even today, the way God is tired of the way we do church, he had, to, he had to put some things in play to force leaders as myself and other churches to think, look, it's not about drawing a crowd in this season. It's more about drawing close to him. And, and, and we have to grab hold of that truth today. We have to grab hold of that. Grabbing hold of God is a choice we make. We must grab hold of God. God is, that's why I wanted you to worship before, before I preach this morning because some of you need to get disciplined in personal worship. Some of you need to get to the habit of turning on your own music and singing out of your own heart in your own home, in your own car, on your own walk and jog, where you're walking the dog, playing with the kids, have music on. You need to learn how to grab hold of God on your own. And when you don't have access to people to get you in the mood, you've got to learn how to get yourself in the mood to worship God. Because worshiping God is your responsibility. It should be your prior, number one priority, and it should be your number one thing that you do at the beginning or the end of your day. we got to grab hold of God as making the choice in this season. It says here in verse 9, we must make the Lord our dwelling. And we need to choose to dwell with the Lord. It says, whoever dwells, whoever dwells, meaning it's a choice, whoever, meaning God is a personal God. He, he has a personal invitation that's wide open for all of us today. But whoever, like, it could be anybody. The invitation, the door is open. Jesus in Revelation is knocking on the door of our heart right now. He, he's looking for a relationship. He's looking for fellowship with you. And, and he, so the invitation is, it's, it says, Whoever, it's not for the elite, it's not for just the pastor, it's not just for super Christians, it's whoever. It's the broken, the hurting, the disenfranchised, the addict, the one who is broken and hurting at the, at the least of these. God says whoever dwells, meaning it's an open invitation, that invitation is still on the table, but ultimately when we see what's available to us, are we willing to make the choice? Are we willing to make God the dwelling place of our life and our heart? As we read through Psalms 91, 1 and 2, we see the word my repeated three times. It says in verse 2, I will say, this is a declaration, I will say the Lord, He is my refuge, He is my fortress, my God in whom I trust. It's a personal relationship. It's about a personal relationship. We need to choose to make God our priority, but we need to choose Him and relationship. We need to get to a place where we can make the same declaration. Do you really know he's your refuge today? Do you know he's your fortress today? Do you know that you, do you, do you really believe you can trust God right now? See, you, you can make only, you only can make that declaration if you've seen a history or a testimony of God working in your life. That's what this psalmist is saying. He's seen, this person had a personal experience with God. That's why he can make such a huge, grandiose declaration. Sometimes the more you walk with God, the, you get declarations that you make in your prayer time because of your encounter with Him, your experience with Him. This psalmist has such an experience with God, he knows without a shadow of doubt. He can declare, you are my refuge. You are my fortress. You're my God and my trust. Why? Because the person making this declaration has seen God do things in his life, and now he's shouting it out. He's declaring it. He's speaking it. In the midst of another difficulty, he's seen God be his fortress before. He's seen God be a refuge in his life, and he's seen God do the miraculous so he can place trust in him, even though the situation he's currently in in Psalms 91, he doesn't have a grip for it. He still says, I'm going to trust in the Lord. Wow, God is so good. 
See, God desires to be in our lives, and He desires to live inside of us so He can work through us to accomplish His plan today. And you know what? As we choose to grab hold of God, it says we must make the Lord a, a, a dwelling place. We must make. What do you mean? We must create. You know what Matthew 6 says? Jesus says, don't be like the Pharisees that are on the street corners drawing attention to themselves in Matthew 6. No, my Father is waiting in a room. It's a secret place. You know what? That secret place could be anytime, anywhere, any place you want to meet with God. It could be your car. It could be your morning job. It could be a place in your yard. It could be your favorite chair. It could be a couch. You know, God says the Father is in the secret place. You know what? We must learn how to create. You know what? We know that in history. God's presence started on his relationship between Adam and Eve. It was a fluid, liquid relationship before sin entered the world. That's the kind of relationship God wants with us. And, he, and God redeems that when Jesus comes into our life. But because of the fall of man, God had to create a sacrifice structure. So then he put into place altars. So, so altars were like, were like movable places. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob all had these altars where they met God at different times and different places. They dug wells. Wells were like an altar. The rock, I mean, piling of rocks was like an altar. And, and so they would meet God at altars. Then, then when Moses came along, God says, you know what? Let's, let's, let, let's build a tabernacle. Let's build a tent of meeting. Let's build a movable structure. Let's, let's, so, so we see that God, we make God a place. It could be a relationship with a God wants that liquid, flowing, personal relationship. Sometimes God, we have to make God a dwelling place in, the, in our life. And, and then we have to, sometimes God's presence. God's, we meet God in, in structures, or we meet God in permanent places, like the tabernacle was a movable structure. But we, then we see in, in, in Kings and Chronicles that, that David got the blueprints to, to build the temple, and the temple became more of a, a, a stable structure. And then, and then God says, no, I don't really don't like that idea, so God sent Jesus, and God had, had Jesus fulfill everything. So that God can ultimately come to the greatest plan, which is sending the Holy Spirit, who would live inside of us, because we're all the temple. We're all we're we're kind of like we're like we're like the whole Ken, Ken Kabuto all in one. We have we're a body, so we have a relationship with God. We have the ability to meet God in different places. We also have a church. We have church buildings, and 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 we're and God calls us a temple, so we're the permanent dwelling place where His Spirit and glory want to fill us, so we can move and ebb and flow with God. That was the greatest thing ever. So just think about it. Are we willing to make God our dwelling this morning? Are we willing to make Him a place where He can dwell? See, grabbing hold of God's a choice. We must choose to let God inside because He wants to accomplish something great through you and myself. He wants to accomplish something great this season, but in order for him to do it, we, we must grab hold of a deeper understanding of who God is. We must grab hold of what God does, but today we must make the choice to grab hold of God, and, and we must create places to meet God as we build with him, just like, our, like Jesus found places to meet with his Father, whether it was by the Sea of Galilee, whether it was in a boat, whether it was in the Garden of Gethsemane, or, or Mount Sinai. Moses had Mount Sinai, he had the tent of meeting, and and then Solomon had the temple. And, and all, all, I mean, you just see all the various places where God met his people in the Old and the New Testament. But the big idea I want to make is today with Psalms 91, verses 1 and 2, is this. The big idea is those who abide in the Lord will be saved. Those who abide in the Lord will be saved. Say that. To, say that. If you got kids in your room, say this together. Those who abide in the Lord will be saved this morning. That's the big idea. That's the, kind of the big idea of the whole song, that when we choose to abide in the Lord, John 15, the Lord will make us safe. You see, another thing is, it says, He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty, will say of the Lord, He is my refuge, my fortress, my God, and my trust. Another picture of this is the Holy of Holies. Picture that for a second. The Old Testament, now we're in the New Testament. Jesus came to fulfill the Old so that we could come into the New Covenant. And guess what? The, the temple curtain was torn, so now we have all have access to the presence of God. We have access into the special hidden place. The hidden place is called the Holy of Holies. That, that's the place where the enemy, that's the place where you find God and the enemy can't find you. And God is saying, and the psalmist is saying, whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. What he's saying is it's an invitation to the hidden things of God, the Holy of Holies. The place where we find God and the place where the enemy cannot find us is in that hidden place called the Holy of Holies. It should be our number one priority to get to that place. And Matthew chapter 6 again talks about that. Jesus says, my Father is in this hidden place. My Father is in this secret place waiting for you. 
So, Pat, so you're probably thinking, Pastor Steve, why this message? Why this message? Well, first of all, a, a couple closing thoughts is this. Why this message? Number one, for those of you that have been following the Lord, and those of you that have a track record, like the person who wrote this song, you need to make declarations. You need to start making declarations in your prayer time. This, this psalm is loaded with the phrase, I will say, I will say. So we need to speak the word of God. We need to speak the word. So many of you have been following God for a long time, you need to stop asking God for stuff and start speaking stuff. You need to make declarations, looking at your history of God. You, a lot of you that have been older in the faith, you've seen God work through plagues and viruses like this. So your job is, is to make declarations so the young generation can catch up. I will say, so we need to say, I will say, Lord, he is my refuge, he is my fortress. So some of you today need to make that declaration. So why do we need this message? For, this message is for the older people to encourage you, don't stop making declarations, don't stop proclaiming the word of God, don't stop speaking the word of God, don't stop praying or interceding. Why do we need this message number two? Practical application. We have a shepherd and we're sheep. And here's the thing about sheep. Sheep, sheep have no real protection other than their shepherd. In fact, a sheep is the only animal that has no built-in protection. The sheep has no sharp teeth. The sheep has no offensive odor to spray to drive off enemies. The sheep has no law of bark. And the sheep, in its certainty, cannot run fast enough to escape danger. See, why do we need this message? Because Psalms 91 is about God's protection. God is our shepherd. We are the sheep. We need this message because we can't take care of ourselves. We don't have the ability to take care of ourselves. Ultimately, we need the shepherd to lead us. God is saying today, I want you to see me as your source of protection. But if God is, is going to step into this message today, he says, look at Psalm 91. Haven't I proved to you that I am your shepherd, that I know you're my sheep, but haven't I proved to you that I am a capable source of protection for you in this storm? God is saying today, I am your good shepherd, and I want you to see me as the number one source of protection. Now, God may use doctors and policemen and firemen and medics and storm sellers, bank accounts and so forth to meet our specific needs, but our, heart, our hearts have to run to him first as our shepherd and as our protector. So remember, we need this message because we have to be reminded today, you're sheep and you need a shepherd. As, and why do we need this message? As followers of Christ, we are going to face trials and we are going to face challenges. There will be trials. Psalms 91 doesn't, Psalms 91 isn't about God taking away the trial. It's about God being with you in the trial. That trials and challenges are a part of walking with Christ. And God doesn't promise to take away those challenges, but he does promise that he'll be with us in it. So as followers of Christ, we must continue to face trials and challenges. And there's going to be hard times. And but when we are with Christ, we will escape the trial. When we are with Christ, we will survive the trial. When we are with Christ, we will be kept safe during the trial. Remember, the trial may be available. The trial may not be taken away, but Christ is promising us that we could escape it, we could survive it, and we could be kept safe in the midst of it. Today, are you willing to make God your refuge? If, you're, if you've been following Jesus for a long time, today maybe you need to make a, a new commitment. Maybe before this COVID virus, your commitment with God was lacking and it wasn't deep. Today you probably need to make a fresh commitment and say, you know what, I need to grab hold of God today. I need, I need, you know what, I've been serving God, but I need to grab hold of God's presence. And then I know for some of you, some of you are watching today, and I want to close with this word. This is the word that I shared earlier. That, that is a fresh word for the season, and I, and I, and I believe, and I, I believe, no one, no one has shared this in the news. No one has shared this in any postings that I can see. I just know last night, before I went on Facebook Live, the Lord dropped, the Lord dropped a nugget in my heart, and I believe for some of you today that aren't serving God, you're troubled. 
Jesus knows that you're in a troubling place and a troubling time. That Jesus knows that your heart is troubled today. But let me give you some encouragement from God's word. In John 14 and John 15 and 16, this is Jesus' final words to his disciples. He just got betrayed by Judas, so now it's down from 12 to 11. Jesus is, re these, this, these are his final words to his closest friends. These aren't just religious leaders. These aren't just ministry friends. These are true friends in the faith. Jesus is unpacking some things. And Jesus is reminding his closest friends about what's going to happen to his life and what's going to happen in the future. Jesus says in John 16, I told you these things, meaning the stuff in John 14, 15, and 16. So he's summarizing John 14, 15, and 16. He says, I told you these things so that in me you may have peace. So Jesus says, look, I know some crazy stuff is going to start happening, but Jesus says, I'm going to give you peace. He says, in this world you will have trouble. Jesus said, look, guys, look. Trouble is evident. Trials are evident. You're going to have a lot of trouble. But he says, take heart. I have overcome the world. So, so in our trouble, we have to look to Jesus. We have to grab hold of God's presence. Because in the trouble, the source that we need to grab hold of is Jesus. We need to grab hold of God's presence. First and foremost. Then we need to grab the peace. And we're going to pray that in a second. Because so many today are in a troubling situation but we have no peace. Jesus wants to give you peace. But what, listen to what Jesus said. You're going to have trouble. But what else does he say? In the midst of the trouble, he says this a couple times. He says, don't let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. He also says again. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give you peace as the world gives. Don't let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. So what does Jesus say? Jesus says, look, you're going to have trouble, but your heart needs to stay untroubled. Jesus says, look, in the midst of trouble, don't let your heart be troubled. Today, some of you are in the trouble, but you've got a troubled heart. I'm here to say Jesus is going to bring peace to you today. Jesus is going to bring peace to your home today. Jesus is going to bring peace today. Why? Because he knows there's trouble, but he's concerned that you have a troubled heart. Jesus does not want you to be a troubled heart. And let me give you, let me give you like an aha moment that I had. Why do we need to grab hold of God's presence? It's because of this. It's because God's not surprised by what's happening right now. God is on the throne. The earth is his footstool. In fact, the Bible says the one who sits on the throne laughs. In some ways, God is a joyful God. He's a good God. And what's happening in our world where we're running around scared and afraid, God's still on the throne. He's probably looking over at the white horse thinking, hmm, is it time yet? But it's not. As long as he hasn't come back yet, there's still work to do. God is sitting and thrown in heaven. And the earth is his footstool. And God is at a place of rest. So if God is at a place of rest, we must grab hold of God's presence. Why? We must fix our eyes on him. Why? He hasn't moved. He's in a place of rest. He wants us to be in that same place of rest with him. He doesn't want us scared running around. He wants us in the presence. He wants our eyes on him in this season. Because when our eyes are on him, we also will have rest. And we also will have peace. So even Jesus isn't freaking out what's happening. John 16, do you realize this is what it says? We're living a prophetic word of Jesus right now. We are living in the times of prophetic fulfillment. Why? Because here's what John 16 says. Jesus says, all of this I have told you so that you would not fall away. Jesus is saying, look, I don't want you falling away right now. I need you committed like never before. Why? Because in verse 2, they will put you out of the synagogue. Come on, somebody. Jesus said there would come a time when we would no longer meet in churches. He says that in John 16 too. They will put you out of the synagogue. Jesus. So Jesus is not surprised by how we're doing church today. And then it says in John 16... Verse 31, he says, do you not believe? Jesus says, a time is coming, and in fact has come, when you will be scattered. Guess what? We're all scattered. We can't meet in church today, but now there's a scattering going on, but it gets better than that. He says, a time is coming, in fact, when you'll come and be scattered, each to your own home. What's happening 
the church. Jesus prophesied we would be kicked out of the synagogue. Jesus prophesied we'd be scattered. Jesus prophesied we would be scattered each to our own homes. It gets better than that. He says this. You will leave me all alone, yet I'm not alone, for my Father is with me. I've told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you have trouble. Take heart, I've overcome the world. Church, i got good news for you today. There's a trouble happening. Jesus does not want to have a troubled heart. Jesus knew there would come a day when we won't be able to meet in churches. Jesus knew there was a day we'd all be scattered. And Jesus knew there would be a day when we'd be scattered to our own homes like we're doing today. Uh, what's, but what's our response? Are you willing to make God your refuge today? Because Jesus says here, you will leave me all alone. That's a scary thought. See, Jesus is with the Father, making intercession with the Father. Jesus is not alone. He said he had the Father. Guess what? We have a promise of the Father being with us. But here's the question. Jesus says, you will leave me all alone. The question I have for you today is, have you left Jesus alone? Have you left Jesus alone today? We must not leave Jesus alone. We must grab hold of Jesus today. So let's bow our heads and close our eyes in this moment as we get ready to close our service. I want you at home. You can make a comment in the comment line or you can send a message on our Facebook page. We want to know if, you're, if, if, if you are coming to Christ today, if you're making a commitment to Christ today. You know, you can put up some prayer hands in the comment line or specifically send an individual message via our church Facebook page. But I want to pray right now because i got to ask you a couple questions. Heavenly Father, as we close this message today, may we grab hold of your presence in a way that we never have grabbed hold of your presence before. Father, we, we understand in Psalms 91 verse 2 that, that, that you are the most high God, almighty God, that you are the Lord God, that you are the God who speaks and you're the God who creates and your word says that you're the, your name is a strong tower, and we run into it, we could be saved today. Father, I pray that there'd be many people watching online that would run in to the name of the Lord today, that they'd run into that name, and we know what that name is. That name is Jesus. Jesus fulfilled everything of the Father. Jesus fulfilled every prophetic word of the Old and New Testament, that Jesus is, in fact, the one true Almighty God manifested to us today, that Jesus is the one we run into. He is that name. And he's inviting us today. We know that he's a shadow, a shelter, a fortress, a refuge. We know. But today, Lord, is a choice. Father, your word says Jesus is standing at the door knocking today again. He's knocking on every home in our city. He's knocking on every home in Minnesota, in this nation, and the world. Jesus is running around knocking on the door today. Like it says in Revelation, I pray that there will be men and women and children and teenagers that would say yes, even right now in their homes, Lord. I will open up the door to let Jesus inside my life, not your family's life. We must make a personal decision today, Lord, before you. You're giving us an invitation, that you're giving us the, the foundational message in this season. And Psalms 91 is that we must grab hold of you today because we are sheep. And Lord, we, your word says you leave the 99 to find the one, Lord, the one that's broken, the one that's lost, the one that's hurting today. Father, we are sheep. And we cannot be protected on our own. And, but so many people have drifted and so many people have walked away. So many people have felt like they could, they could handle this whole situation on their own. But Lord, you're reminding us today that I am your source of protection. Do you trust me? Father, I pray today, a choice in grabbing hold of you is the first step in trusting you. In trusting our lives into your hands. Lord, as we learn today in your word, you are a God we can trust. You are someone we can lean into. You are someone that we know can help us and heal us in this time. Father, I pray for those that are home today. If your head bowed and eyes closed. If you've never invited Jesus to come into your heart to bring salvation, to bring healing today, I want you to, to either put up some prayer hands in the comment line, or please send us an individual message on our Facebook page to say, yes, today was the day I said yes to Jesus, because I want to personally follow up with you and pray with you and encourage you on this new decision. This is a hard, I remember January 28, 1992, I was, a, I was addicted to alcohol, I was a suicidal, and in my moment of my deepest pain, I was grabbing hold of other things. I was trusting in other gods that weren't helping me, but yet at my lowest place, 
a chapel and led me to Christ like I'm doing to you. And I said yes to Jesus. It was the day that my life changed forever. I believe today God could change your life forever. That God, the Bible says God takes what is bad and turns it into good. God can use this COVID virus to bring many people to Jesus today. I want to pray with you right now to accept Christ. Let COVID virus be your reminder of the time that you said yes to Jesus. May this be your battle cry. May this be your, may this be your sword in the sand in your life. Say, you know what? I'm going to put to death the virus called sin. Because that's what this virus is. This is a manifestation of a sinful world that we live in. But today you can put the sword to that in your own life. You can put the sword to that, to that sinfulness. And you can say, I'm putting, a, I'm putting a sword into this thing in Jesus' name. So if you want to accept Christ, I want, to, I want you to pray with me right now in your home. Just hold your hands and... Pray with me. Say, dear Jesus, come into my heart and come into my life. Dear Jesus, save me from the virus of sin today. Dear Jesus, I ask you for forgiveness today. Lord, forgive me for my sin. Forgive me for the things that I've done. Lord, forgive me for the false gods that I tried to grab hold of in this trial. Forgive me today, Lord. Wash me clean. Set me free. Father, please send your Holy Spirit to begin to transform my life right now. Bring healing to me today. Bring salvation to me today, Lord. I trust in your name. I believe. Say, I believe. I believe you died on the cross for my sin. I believe you rose from the dead on my behalf. I believe you sent your Holy Spirit to be my helper. Say, I believe you're coming back again. So come into my life today, Jesus. Make me whole, make me you. And Jesus, help me to grab a hold of you today. Jesus, help me to grab hold of your presence in this storm. Jesus, I say yes to you today. I say yes to you today. Lord, take me by the hand. Bring me into your presence. Right? My name in your book in heaven. So Jesus, come today. Heal me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you've prayed with the Lord like Jesus in your heart today, please let, let, let me know. Send a message on our Living Hope Church Facebook. And Lord, for those of you that are believers, hold up your hands like you're receiving of Jesus. Your word says that in John 16... We would have a day when we'd be out of the church. There would be a day when we'd be scattered. There would be a day when we'd meet each in our own homes. But yet, your word says, we're going to have trouble. But that doesn't mean we have a troubled heart. So Father, I pray for those that might have troubled hearts today. So put your hand on your heart. Heavenly Father, I pray for those that have troubled hearts. I pray for a spirit of peace. Your word says that you give peace. Your peace. You don't give peace like the world gives. But Lord, release peace right now into every home. Father, I cleanse every home. Father, right now in the name of Jesus. I believe and declare that the shalom of God will rest on every home in our city, in our region, in our state, in our nation. God, the homes that are watching this morning, release your presence of peace in the home. I pray that that home would be cleansed, that that home would not be commissioned every home to be a refuge. We commission every home to be a shelter. We commission every home to be a fortress. We commission every home to be a place where people can come for, for, for help, for healing, for salvation. God, we commission the homes of our church today. We commission every home to be a refuge in this storm. We commission our homes right now. We commission the dads of the home to be the spiritual leaders today. I commission every father to be the spiritual head of their household. Father, they don't need to have enough knowledge. All they need is to trust you, and you will give them the knowledge. So, Father, I equip, I equip those uh, men and women in the homes to be the spiritual leaders for their kids. I equip spiritual leaders right now. We raise them up in this season. Raise up men and women to be spiritual leaders of their homes, in their neighborhoods, in their communities. Father, we bless the homes today. We bless the families today. We pray no more trouble. We pray no more troubled hearts. Father, help them not to be afraid. Help them not to fear. Instead, we commission them to live fearless. We commission them to pray focused. We commission them to walk in wisdom today. Father, we commission you to go and be their counselor, be their teacher, be their advocate, be their helper in this season. Father, just bless her be home today in the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. And finally, I want to, I want to close with a blessing. It says in number six, 
Numbers 6, 24. We've done this blessing at our church a few times, but I want to give you a little more backing on it, and, I want, and I'm going to post this on our church's Facebook page so that you can pray this blessing over your life. But it says in Numbers 6, 22, the Lord said to Moses, tell Aaron and his sons, this is how you are to bless the Israelites. Say to them, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Verse 22. So they will put my name on Israel and I will bless them. So when, we de when I declare this blessing, and when I speak this blessing over you today, over your home, I think it's prophetic that you're in your homes because I'm going to speak this blessing over you and your home. When I speak this blessing, God is saying, I'm putting my name on you. I'm putting my name. I'm stamping my name. I'm engraving my name over your home and over your life. That's powerful. Just think about the name we talked about today, El Yom, the Almighty God, El Shaddai, Yahweh, Elohim. That name, the name of Jesus. So when I speak this blessing, God is going to stamp and grave his name on your home and on your life. When we declare this blessing, it I believe it will, it will start to, a shift in atmosphere in your home. And I'm going to post this later on Facebook so that you can declare this over your kids and over your life. So Heavenly Father... Heavenly Father, I come to your presence and with every man, woman, and child in their homes, the same way that, that Moses and Aaron and the priests would speak this blessing. God, I raise up my hands today. I raise up my hands and I say, Lord, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you, be gracious to you. Father, may the Lord turn your face toward these people. Grant them peace. And Father, put your name on their home and on their life. Now I'm going to pray this blessing in the original translation of the original Hebrew. Yahweh will kneel before you, presenting you gifts. Yahweh will guard you with a hedge of protection. Yahweh will illuminate his wholeness of being towards you, bringing order. And Yahweh will beautify you. Yahweh will lift up his wholeness of being and look upon you and Yahweh will set in place all that we need to be whole and complete, all that we need to be whole and complete in this trial and in this storm and in this season. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. I want to thank you so much for joining us online. Look forward to next week as part two of, of Psalms 91 that God, if we grab hold of God's presence next week, we're going to talk about how we grab hold of God's protection. And that's a good one because it talks about how we grab hold of the victory that we have in the Lord. And so I want to encourage you this week, stay tuned to Facebook Live. Stay tuned as I'm going to be sharing with you insights and things to keep you encouraged and, and keep you praying through this storm that we're in. I want to encourage you, go back and, and, and re-listen to those worship songs we play. And next week there will be a new set list. Also, I want to encourage you, please consider giving in this season. You know, you can mail in your offering to Living Hope Church, P.O. Box 26, Mora, Minnesota, 55051. You can download our Living Hope Church more app on Google Play or iTunes. And, and then finally, you can text... Mora Hope. Text Mora Hope to 77977. Those are three simple ways that you can give in this season. Your generosity is greatly appreciated. I love you. I'm praying for you again. The best way to get a hold of me in this season is that you can call the church and leave a message because we'll be checking our messages. We are open for business. We want to pray with you. We want to encourage you. We want to stay within the guidelines of social distancing, but does that mean that we can't call each other on the phone? And, and also email. You can email um, you can email us through um, hoops, or you can email us through admin. Um, it's ad, well, we'll, we'll post, I'll post our, how the ways to get a hold of us in this season. But you can always send a Facebook message to our Living Hope Church Mora. The easiest way is to send us an, an email message on that. We want to get a hold of you. And if you've accepted Christ today, if today was the first day of your spiritual journey, please reach out to us. We want to follow up with you, pray with you encourage you and send you some resources to help you on your spiritual journey today. 
I'm excited at what God's doing today, what He's going to do. Also, stay tuned on Facebook for outreach opportunities. The Lord's put some ideas in my spirit that I just have to pray through and think about. But I believe in this season, um, if it's going to be a long one, there, there are some creative ways that we can bless our community. And so I'm praying about how we could do that. And I'm going to ask, I'm going to have a big ask coming up to where, hey, even though we're online and I'm meeting, um, we can still meet together and do some ministry. And i got some ideas of what we could do to be a blessing, especially with Easter coming up. Also, next week as we do our service, make sure you have communion elements ready. Next week we're going to take communion during our service. Um, you know, so have crackers, juice, or, or supplement to that so that we can participate in communion together. I just love each and every one of you. I'm praying for you and realize that God is with you. God is for you in this, and he will bless you. He will turn things around. Never stop being alive. Never stop shining it. Take care. Lord bless. Bye-bye.